do that to load it. I think they load it up, but it does look kind of scary. See if. All right, look at this over here. Look at what I found today. Cherry blossoms. Can you see those? Look at that. Little tiny pink cherry blossoms of some of the trees. This one has the most by far, but it's coming. Spring is coming. I was hoping to use my fancy new little camera, but of course I got the other piece I needed. But then when I opened the little attachment that, so you could use it and hold it, um, it was missing a piece in the box. <laughs> so this little camera thing, uh, once we get it working, but I did come over here a little bit early and I made a video here in the park that I'm gonna post. And I made one that I, in the Louvre the other day after last week, so we couldn't get into the window. I'm going to put that on YouTube and go check it out because the camera is so great. I love it. I'm so excited to use it. So I had to reorder and spent 20 minutes with Amazon and they gave me, uh, they're sending me something, the pieces that I need. But we'll go ahead and get started. We are, of course, you know, you can see where we are. We're over here on the left bank, right on the edge of the left bank in the Latin Quarter. And we're looking up at Our Lady. I thought about starting over there, but I'll save it. We'll do that on the anniversary on the 15th of April. Um, but I am in this little park. It's a square Rene Viviani. And Rene Viviani, he was a lawyer and he was in the government and he was the guy to push through the law. So in the year 1900, women could become lawyers. Could have vote, but hey, you could be a lawyer here in France. So that's pretty cool. Um, but there's a lot of really cool things in this park and I love this little area. And I was really excited because originally I thought it was closed at five, but I came over here this morning and it said it was open till six. So we are in luck. Look at that, just a cute little pink tree against that cute little pink house. But here in the very center, we have this really cool bronze sculpture and it is, um, was done by an artist named uh, Georges Lanco. And this, they did it in 1993, so it's a big anniversary this year. And it is about the story of Saint Julien. And Saint Julien is the church that's right next to us that I'll show you too. Um, but it's really pretty. I took some really cool pictures of it this morning that I will post later. But Saint Julien um, was a Julien himself. He was out hunting one day in the forest and he came across a deer to talk to him. And the deer said, you are going to kill a loved one. And so of course he was completely distraught about this fact. And he said, he said to himself, well, I just can't be ever be home. So he made sure that he was never at home um, and he'd go out hunting and he'd go out into the forest all the time. And he one day decided he came home and he did not know that his parents had come to visit. And so his mother and his father were asleep in his bed. And when he got home, he thought that there was another man in his bed with his wife. And he got so upset, look at the cute little one. He got so upset that he killed them. And then he learned that it was his father and or his parents. And so he was so upset and he left. Um, and he decided he was gonna go work. Look at this cool this is. He was going to go and work um, as just a river tender. Go, and he was at this river and there was, he had a little boat and he would just go back and forth. Um, you know, helping people ferry him across the cross shore to the other shore. And one day a gentleman got on there and he didn't have any food and he didn't have any money and he didn't have any shoes or a coat or anything and sent. So Julianne gave it, gave everything he had to him. And he said, here, you know, you need this. And it ended up being that that, that uh, poor soul that had nothing was actually Jesus. And then he said, I've absolved you of all your sins. And you are now, you could go home and everything will be fine. And thank you for everything that you did for me. So now we saw Julianne the Poor, say Julianne the Poor. But look at this. It actually even looks like that looks like a kind of like Hebrew letters on there. But 
this is supposed to be um this is supposed to be for him and his story too so you you do see the deer there but it's also supposed to be like you know here are these loved ones all together in an embrace so it's the lovely side of the story not the side of the story where he killed his parents <laughs> you know all these all of those uh all of those stories have have some sort of a turn to it i'll go over this way and look there's little flowers they planted over here but look there's little daffodils and all the pigeons but all those little happy i love daffodils i love yellow i just it's such a happy little color isn't it but over here so here because we are so close to notre dame here in the park are a bunch of pieces look i'm going to sneak up here are a bunch of pieces from the original notre dame when it was built and these are pieces that were taken off under ville le duc in the 19th century so these are all pieces that were once on notre dame just right here. I love it. You just wonder, maybe there's some pieces that are up there now that are going to come down here to the into the gardens and into museums. But then the other cool thing is right here. And you know, last last year we came here with Kate and we came around the corner and the garden was closed. And I looked at the date we did it in February 20th last year. And when we she came around here and we saw this, I I gasped. And I think all of us that were watching gasped because it was it was looked in it was in bad shape. It was all totally cut back, um, and we thought like, oh my gosh, what happened to it? Something like it's gonna, it's destroyed. But thankfully, they probably just cut it back to the winter, so there's no leaves on it yet. But she's still here. But this tree is the oldest living thing in Paris. It dates back to 1601, and it was planted here by Jean Rubin. And he was a gardener for Henry the Fourth. Can you believe that, Henry the Fourth? He was king in the 16th century, in the um, early 17th century, until his 1610 when he was killed. Which we'll talk about him a little bit more today, because I always love to talk about Henry the Fourth. But this—that is how long this tree has been here. I can't even like can, I, you can't even. This tree is older than America. How about that? And apparently it's actually an American tree. It's, yeah, it's originally from the United States. So I don't know, it could be, uh, and it's still here. There's an American oak. I think it's an American oak in the Jardin de Luxembourg next to the Statue of Liberty um, that was given after 9-11. And I don't think that does so well in Paris because it tree never looks like it's very uh, healthy, but this is really cool to see this here. And it was actually bombed in World War I. A German shell hit it. And it's still here. It's still going. But you have this lovely, here's the church. We're going to see it from the other side too. But we're going to go out here around the back. And there's this little well here that used to be here. We are actually right on the side. Maybe we'll go this direction. <laughs> um, it was, we are right on what used to be one of the original Roman Gallo roads here. Look, some more little buds. Got little yellow buds here. We have people having their siesta. I think there's some illicit activity happening down there. So we'll go out this side. It smells like something you get you you can figure it out i love how these this little step out of there is so worn down it's so old so we're right we're just right below boulevard saint germain just is kind of right right up the road from us We're gonna go over here around that. And here's you have all of these it's my favorite signs, you know. The history of Paris signs. But we're gonna go around the corner here to the Rue Galon. There's another oldest thing in all of Paris here. 
this cute little tea shop. I came over here this morning at about 9.30 and it was so lovely because nobody was on the street. It was just me. And it's so fun just to walk around. So we're here on Rue Galland. And on Rue Galland, up here, above, it's very funny, it's over at this theater, is the oldest street sign in all of Paris, right there. And it again, is Saint Julien. So that's Saint Julien. I told you how he was on a boat bearing people. So that's Saint Julien, the moment where he's absolved of everything. But it's right here and it dates back a very long time. And it's just hilarious that it's here over um, over the uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show sign. But the street itself goes back to 1200 because when Paris was found, it was founded there across the way on Ile de la Cité, smaller version of it than what we know today. And then this is the next area that they started to develop. And that street sign goes back to 1380. So it's 14th century. So that street sign was there before that tree. The original sign is said to be in the Louvre, but I've never found it in the Louvre and I've never found it in the database. And so I need to ask my, my little ladies in my favorite library what they know about it and what they could find out for me. But this is the Rue Galon. And a lot of people over here love that Odette place that has the cream puffs. But right across, this is a, there's, a, there's a quite a few jazz bars here. And I actually just had this client that I just sent them. They wanted to know the jazz bar, so I sent them a bunch. I should add them to my website. But here we are, this is the church. So this here is the church of Saint Julien. And not only is it one of the older churches, that the one that we see now today is 12th century, but another oldest thing in Paris is this over here that probably nobody would ever think of to look, but this is the original stone from the Gallo-Roman road. So this guy here is older than that sign, the tree, all of it. So this used to be part of the Gallo-Roman road because we are uh, right uh, next to Rue Saint-Jacques and when they say that all roads lead to Rome, Rue Saint-Jacques did actually lead to Rome, but this was the stone. This is the only piece of that road left and it's just sitting here in the courtyard of the church next to this thing that looks kind of like a big bird cake. <laughs> but the church is really tiny inside. Um, they're setting up, they have a, uh, oh look. Okay, we're gonna go in that tiny bit, but I'm not gonna go in very far because it's never open. Bonjour. I think it might have been at four o'clock. Musicians in here. That was a special little treat. It's a really pretty church. It smelled really good too. Yeah, they had this today. They had a. They have a live music in there. A lot that you could buy tickets to. And there goes the musician. Maybe they could come play it for something for us. I love this door. And over here, you have Josephine Baker up there on the wall. Lovely Josephine. But there's Odette. And of course, Shakespeare Company is around the corner. And Saint Sevra, this gorgeous church. When I was here this morning, it was when they were calling to mass. So I took some videos of the bells. The bells, I think, I, I'm pretty sure they went for five minutes. 
because I recorded about a minute of it and then it just kept going. It was really pretty. So we're gonna try, can we get in this one? I think masks, if it's sick, and I'm not sure how the signal is gonna go in here, but we're gonna try to pop in here because there's another little thing in here I love. I love these grates that, I really love the ones that look like a rose window. Look at that door. Look at that key though. And so what's really famous about this church is these columns and capitals because they're like palm trees. So they they look uh how they twist, they go up. It's really, really cool. And then the chapels are just kind of small. And then you have, here's your puppy. You have these windows here that were done in the Ottoman into the 70s and they're supposed to they all represent the elements so this one's obviously water oh there's a lot of work going on here i couldn't come in this morning because it was mass and it said no visits and so i stayed but in the back of here is a rose window or not a rose window but a stained glass window see the back right these chapels I'll come in another day when there's not music and do a real in-depth video here and give you guys all the chapels and windows and all that good stuff. But back here in the back is a stained glass window that was done by Emil Hirsch. And Emile Hirsch was a student of, guess who, Delacroix. And this window was done um, to commemorate the communion on May 3rd, 1877. And so it was done. A lot of these things, when they are done in churches, they're done by um, donors. And so these donors give a bunch of money. And sometimes, like in the art in the Louvre, like it, that, that used to be in churches, the donor will be painted in there. Sometimes their face is painted on as a saint or something, you know, whatever. But here in this one, up here in the corner is a face and hair you might recognize. You can see that. That guy right there is Charles Garnier. And Charles Garnier, as you know, is the designer, the architect, of the beautiful opera house, one of the most beautiful buildings in Paris, the opera, the Palais Garnier. But now it just has ballets. But this was his parish. This was where he was married. This is where his funeral was. And he was a donator for that window. And so they put his moppy little head in there. He, his his uh, hairstyle is just so distinctive because it's very different from that period. But the first time I came in here, I was looking and I was like, that guy looks kind of funny. And then I looked into it and sure enough, but look at how beautiful this church is. There's a door over here that I walked right past. And I just, and it's usually really dark in here. Let's see. Oh, they have light on there. But look at this door. Just look at this chapel. How gorgeous is it? And look at this door and the hinges on it. I mean, the detail on these things and even the wood, the detail in the wood, kind of how it looks like it's folded. Maybe not, maybe not that part. <laughs> and then you have all the X photos here. It's a really, it's a really pretty church. Have all these amazing little details like that's probably a little dark for you to see but and all the saints up there it's a really pretty church
You can see in the very back, you can see the columns, the top of the columns, the palm tree columns. But it's a quiet church. It's not, not a lot of people visit it. So it's kind of a, it's a nice one to pop in and check out. I'm glad that we, the timing of it worked out today. And you have next to it, it used to be a cemetery and they're doing a bunch of work on this building. But this is not, ne this is never open. I wish it was so you could walk around in there. <coughs> I have a, something I'm doing actually with the priest of San Suplice. I'm going to be doing some stuff for, with them. So maybe I'll see if he knows somebody over here. He just give me like a key to all the churches. Straight ahead is the Clooney Museum. But we're not going that direction. These are, uh, I just love these little streets down here in the Latin Quarter because they're all just so old and unchanged like they just they weren't uh hit by housemen in napoleon the third so here on this street the rue de la parchmanerie which is the parchment workers were here is up here and it's by this artist named c125 and he goes around paris and he does these stencils um, and he does different themes and so he did ones a few years ago at his big anniversary of the liberation and then he did a bunch of these that are for um, World War One, and most of them are actually around the around Les Invalides because that's where there's a museum. But this one here, um, I saw this today, and I was like, "Who is that guy?" And then I went and looked him up. His name is Maurice uh, Genevo. He lived from 1890 to 1980, and he fought in World War One, and he was also a writer. But he just um, a few years ago in 2020. 2000, 2000, yeah, 2020, he was just entered into the Pantheon. So he fought in World War I and pretty much start to finish. He was an excellent physical shape. And so anytime he'd get wounded, he just basically like, he was like the bionic man. He just like bounce up and, and just keep on going. But it's a really a neat story. Um, and I'll share some more of that online um, soon because I wanted to write more about him but I love that they, I love that this artist does this and puts these up. There's some in the Marais that are people of the Marais. Like there's one I found the other day at Madame de Montespan. Um, oh, here, we'll zoom out a little for you. And up here on the corner is a statue of St. Vincent de Paul. But look at that, look at that, uh, look at that building right there. How great is that? I always think, oh, it'd be pretty neat one of these, but my building's actually a 16th century building. So I live in a building built under when Henry IV was here. And so this little street has this great bookstore here um, that if you want to, uh, it's an English bookstore, the Abbey bookstore, pack your, uh, pack your hunting skills. Um, it is, but look at, I mean, I love actually a bookstore that you just get to go through and dig through all of the, it's um, pretty much all used books. So you can actually find some really great treasures in used bookstores. I love that. I love the French bookstores because I find more historical information um, than in the English ones. But if you don't speak French and you're here, you want to find a great book that maybe was printed in England and they don't have, you, didn't, you can't find in the US, go check it out. So this little street here, look at, oh, it's on deal. That's perfect right now for this time of the year. So it's been so cold this week. Last week after the video, my hands, my fingers were red, bright red. <laughs> and it, I got home and it took me about an hour to warm up. I actually put my hands on the radiator that's, on, in my bathroom, I just basically stood and pressed myself against it to try to warm back up. It was so incredibly cold. 
So part of the reason I picked this one, this area, oh, look at those French flag color shoes, um, is because, well, the number one reason I thought about doing it was because the podcast this last week and then the second episode comes out tomorrow. It's about the affair of the poisons and the affair of the poisons um, happen in Paris in the 17th century. And it was a big thing to hit the court of Versailles. And it was uh, really interesting. It was a really interesting story. And there were some pretty nasty people doing some nasty things. A little siren. And so that was really fun to talk about. But hang on. <laughs> Give you your siren fix. Oh, the Pompier. There was, right before I started, there were the uh, rollerbladers that come through. And uh, the police the police lead them and the uh, fire department follows them in case anybody gets hurt. But it was, they were coming down, uh, Rousseau Jacques right here, or Boulevard Saint Michel, sorry, and um, flying down here. And so there was lots and lots of sirens. We'll eventually get over here. They changed this, uh, they built this, I think within the last six months or so, they opened this NBA store right here. They really tried to uh, get the NBA to really kick off. Uh -huh. <laughs> to really kick off here in France, which you know Mbappe, my sweet little Mbappe, he loves NBA. And he yesterday in their match last night against Nantes scored his two hundred and first goal. So he is the he has had more goals for Paris Saint Germain than anybody else. He beat out Cabernet, who was at 200. So, and he's still a kid. He won't always be there though. So this little street, so what I was mentioning about the poison there is, and I learned this years and years ago, long before the podcast, because I lived in the building, or I didn't live there. I stayed there once for six weeks in an apartment that I think was haunted by one of the witches of the poison affair. But I stayed in this apartment here. And so this is the Rue Oui. And see that really cool building there with that, that has that little uh, bump out with this red door. So this building at number five, I stayed in there. And before the po official poison affair kicked off, there was another event and it all involved this couple. And so his name was uh, Gaudin de Saint-Croix and she was Mary uh, Madeleine. She was the Marquise de Bronville and she was married and uh, she had this lover, Miss Saint-Croix, and he ended up going to prison because her husband found out that she had a lover and he was mad. And so he was able just to have her, her lover sent to prison. So when he went to prison, he was there at the Bastille. He was there for about two months. And while he was there, he met another guy that actually knew a thing or two about uh, poisoning. And he taught him everything he knew. He told him where to go. He said, go to this, uh, this guy that's at the Jardin de Plant, and he will give you everything you need that so you could create these poisons that are that won't smell, they won't taste, and they're undetectable. And so St. Croix gets out of jail, comes back here to number five, and they continue their affair. And he tells her all about this. And so then they end up starting to create these poisons and they go to the, you know, Jardin de Plant's not that far away, about a mile away down below our Saint-Germain. And he was, uh, to, they were creating all these poisons. And so they would put, they would make these poisons. They would 
put them in suites, like into cakes and all these different things. They'd go over across the river to the Hotel Dieu and they would give it to the patients there. And then they would sit there and watch and document like what happened. If they like every sort of, you know, anything that happened with them, what they, what they experienced, how long it took them to die, everything like horrible. And they did this basically just for fun. And so they were actually living here at, he was, he was living here where they had their affair and maybe like that was their lab up there, that fun little turret of the side of the building. Uh, but this building itself um, where I stayed, I'll tell you that lovely story, but it, this building itself dates back to the 16th century, but it, the original one was um, back in the 13th century and it was uh, the Abbot of uh, Fécon. And so this was actually an abbey um, that was built here because this was part of the church in this area. And it, so now it's still the, called the Hotel de Fécon. But it is, uh, it is from the 16th century. So, I mean, which is still pretty doggone old. But I just loved, and I remember coming here and thinking this was so cool. And I was so close to Notre Dame. And this was before the fire. And I stayed here and it was a, um, an apartment on, I think it was the first floor. And it looked down into the courtyard um, and it had those really great, beautiful old beams like my apartment has. But one night in the middle of the night, I heard this dink, dink, dink. And I was like, you know, and all those things, you know, things like that only happen in the middle of the night. The smoke detector only goes out in the middle of the night. All of these things happen in the middle of the night. And so I got up and it was in the bathroom. And from those great, big, beautiful, giant wood beams, was water just slowly dripping from the middle of the beam. So I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? And there's, you know, it's, it was like two o'clock in the morning. So I got buckets and I, or, you know, pants and everything put it underneath. I only had like one set of towels and they wouldn't give me another set of towels when I got there unless I wanted to pay for it. And so I was like, well, this is ridiculous. And so then I just go back to bed, but you can't really go to sleep. And then next thing, I don't know what's going on over here. Next thing I know, I hear more. And now it's starting to leak in the kitchen. So I'm running out at this point of, of things that's gonna hold water. And I was just like, oh, this is the worst. So of course I had no sleep at all. The next morning was a Sunday. It was the Sunday of, uh, oh, there's a lot of, uh, there's something happening over here. Um, the next morning was Patrimon Sunday. And so I had places I had, things I was doing, places I had to be. And I would finally, they, by the time they finally answered my message, it was like noon. And they were like, well, sorry, it's Sunday. We can't do anything for you. Can't you? And I said, well, I can't leave and go back there. I have things I'm doing. Like I was standing in line for a Hotel de Ville. And uh, by the time, so then I had just like, they're like, well, it's Sunday. We can't get anybody to fix it. So sorry. And I was like, well, can you at least bring me some more towels? And I'm not going to pay for them. <laughs> and so they ended up dropping them off. But uh I, uh, it ended up stopping, leaked for 24 hours, but they kind of really didn't care. And after that, it wasn't on Airbnb anymore. So I wanted to tell you about the statue, but we'll come over, we'll come back here a different day because I don't think you'll be able to hear me. So we're gonna go down this little street. This little kind of passage. I think that was a Venezuelan flag. I love these little side of a place you could go down. So this cute little street here. Um, if you notice, there's a sign up here that has a salamander on it. And the salamander was the symbol for Francois Premier. So Francois Premier picked the salamander because the salamander is, could live in on land or in water. It's also supposed to be resistant to fire. Basically it's supposed to be this like very medieval, you know, mythical creature and it's really indestructible. And so 
Francois Premier picked the salamander as his emblem. And there was uh, another king, Louis the Louis the Seventh, that picked the, the porcupine, but not every king. Because one day I was like, "What? I gotta find out what all of the kings what their animals were," but not not the not it really any of the other ones. But so this here at number twenty two on this cute little street, um, the the Rue de l'Ordel, which is a swallow, is here at number twenty two. This was built by Francois Premier for his favorite. And uh, Pisalu, and who she uh, basically your favorite is his favorite mistress, mistress number one. And so he built a building here for her. She was um, his last great love of his life before he died. And his son, Henry II, his favorite, his number one mistress and love of his life was Diane de Poitiers. And she did not like Anne. And so when Francois Premier died, Diane basically was like, yeah, you're out of here. We're chucking you out of everything. Um, we're kicking you out of um, all of your palaces and everywhere you had. And so, but funny thing is, is that when Henry II died, guess what Catherine de Medici did to Diane? She also just kicked her over to the curb. And so over here, right here, number 25, right past where that person is sitting, was once a cabaret called La Bole. And that is where Baudelaire and his love, Jean Duval, used to come all the time. And she was a, there's not a lot known about her, but we did do a podcast about her. Uh, she was really beautiful. And she, uh, Manet actually painted her because Manet and Baudelaire are good friends. There's just a lot of screaming going on. But another lady we talked about, I found here today too. So look at this. Here's Rosa Bonheur. She is wonderful. Oh, and Gainsbourg, which we just had the anniversary. Oh, there's some not PG-13 pictures here, but I love Rosa. She was an amazing artist, an amazing, amazing woman. So we're going to just weave around and down these little streets. But look at this building in front of us. I love this building right here. That, that is a San Andre de Sa, and this building here at number 27. I mean, look at that. Who doesn't want to have that fairy tale balcony up there? I love it. And this um, was once, uh, this was built for Andre Duchesne, who under Louis the 13th, and he was a biographer of Louis the 13th. And it was built in 1640, but isn't that gorgeous? I just love that, that whole door, everything. This looks like a, I have not been in here. Cafe Latin, Boeuf Bourguignon. Oh, some Boeuf Bourguignon sounds delicious right now. Some nice, warm Boeuf Bourguignon. I love this here. Um, oh, that is the one that's in. So I love this here. This has been here for years and it is Van Gogh's Starry Night. And Little tiny mirrors, isn't that awesome? We're gonna just weave what right around the corner here. Usually, this street is very, very busy. There's these, uh, this street art, just believe in arts all over different like uh, buildings that are closed up or under construction. Whoever's doing this is it's a they're adding on everything. And I love somebody underneath it said, Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Just, you could just move past it. Nobody's telling you, except for I would tell you to believe in art. So we're gonna head over right around the corner. Oh, I almost got killed by a bird. To Rue Sejour. He was a, Pierre Sejour was a very high ranking official and a chancellor to Louis the 13th and Louis the 14th. And there's this really great, big, huge, amazing, amazing painting in the Louvre, which I'll put a picture of that on the website with the notes from today. But look at this gorgeous door. This is where Georges Pitard, he was a lawyer and he was a communist lawyer actually, but he was killed by the Nazis in 1941. This little place right here used to be a fantastic French history bookstore. I would come here and buy way too many things. It's amazing. And then it closed years ago. Now it's a little, 
art gallery. Look at how cute. See, I just love these. I love all these little streets. That straight ahead is the courthouse. So it's under scaffolding like many, many things are right now in Paris. And now we're gonna get a little more recent history or as recent as, as I like to get in Paris. <laughs> we'll have some 20th century history coming up around the corner. Isn't this a great little street? I like to, every day this week, when I was going in the morning, I was going down. I never take the same little streets in the morning. I was taking different streets every morning and using different bridges to cross over. It's just kind of fun that way. But this building, or this street, sorry, Rue Savoie, this little street here is where another gal from our podcast lived. And another one I read something about today. artist and realist she was a sculptor she was she did a little bit of everything and in the 1930s at the Cafe de Mago. She was there one night and she met a Spanish painter named Picasso and he was instantly enamored with her. She was sitting there, she had the way out and she was doing that game where you just rapidly stab an eye and they say that her gloves were, um, and she does, wasn't looking down at her fingers, attracted to her. At that time, she was more famous than Picasso. He wasn't as, as well, he wasn't Picasso, Picasso yet. And so the two of them started a long affair. Well, after the affair ended, he actually um, helped her and bought an apartment here. Maybe it's that one with the light on. Maybe that, that'd be very sad though, if somebody was living in her apartment. Um, but he helped her, he bought this apartment for her because he also lived very close, which is a little, little creepy, but, <clears throat> and a little controlling. But she lived here until the end of her days. She actually died not that long ago, 1997. 1997 is not that long ago. And uh, she died and she ended up becoming kind of a recluse. She just basically, nobody would see her. The last exhibit that she did was about four years before that. And she was here and basically she would come out the door every once in a while. And one day after a few days, the neighbors noticed they hadn't seen her and somebody went and knocked on the door. She had passed away a few days before that in her apartment. Um, so it's very sad, but she, uh, she, you know, there was a, it was actually an amazing mini series done about him and it was on the National Geographic channel. And they did a, they did this show for I think two or three seasons. It was called Genius. And the second season was about Picasso. The first, the third one I think was, maybe one of them was Einstein. I don't know. I only watched the Picasso. I've seen it a couple of times. It's really, really well done. And uh, she kind of, she's portrayed in history as kind of going crazy. But I think she did have, some issues, but she also dealt with her parent, mother died and her father died. And um, he, Picasso kind of put her through a lot. And so, which is kind of sad, but I don't, I think now maybe the term, you know, using the term crazy isn't exactly okay to use anyway. So, but here, this building number 13, this is, I just learned about her when I was looking up stuff for today. Um, a woman named, um, it was like this amazing mathematician in 1776 is when she was born. And she was so incredibly smart that when she wanted to publish her theories that she um, had to do it under a man's name, of course, because you weren't allowed to do that as a woman. Um, but she lived here um, and it was really fascinating where, you know, the last thing I'm gonna be good at is math. Let me tell you, I hated that in school. Absolutely hated it. 
we're going up here and take a right. And that is the Rue des Grands Augustins, which is in the back of the house. And the Rue des Grands Augustins is where Picasso lived. So we're going to go around the corner, but then we're going to kind of come back this direction, go on the next street. It's getting a little chillier. There is this little store here, De Letant, which is a hi, a champagne store, and they do champagne tastings in there. I've tried to book those for clients. And it's impossible to book it and it's impossible to get anybody to talk to they want you to buy the tasting in advance but you don't know the day or any of the information it's it's really very strange so right here at this building right here where this is look at this bright door so this building in 1937 picasso moved into and it was actually dora mar that found this building and the reason why he knew he had to move here and he loved it and he lived up there at the very top where those big tall windows are. Oh, the reason why he also fell in love with this building because he needed a bigger space to work and he was she found this and she said this is you know it's on the Rue des Grands Augustin and he just says I, I have to live there. I have to have it. And so the reason why he loved it so much also was because um, uh, Balzac actually wrote this book and this book was all about uh, it was about it, two artists there was a young man a young artist and then a old artist and the young artist was like you know use the old artist as a as a mentor and he um, looked up to him and so in this story and they basically lived in this apartment at number seven Rue Grand Augustin des Grand Augustin and so Picasso said that that's where he did it he was like well that's where I have to that's where I have to stay so he ended up moving in here in 1937 and you can see on this plaque after this car goes by and somebody recently has added those figures but it was 1937, but in this, it also mentions Guernica. So this was where he actually painted Guernica. He created Guernica, which is, is painted and also of uh, paper cuts. Um, and Guernica was a, was a moment that happened on um, April 26th, my birthday. Not the best, that and Chernobyl are two, two events from that happened on April 26th and aren't that great to remember. Uh, but it was here that he did that. Look at that. So, and for years they've talked about reopening this and doing it as an event space or doing it as a museum, uh, but the they the owners of it cannot get uh, on the same page. And so every two years it comes up that this might happen, uh, but then of course nothing is happening with it, which I would die to get inside there. My friend John Baxter has gone inside for something one time, and I just about I was like, tell me everything about it. And so. Next door also at number three on the other side is actually where Robert and Sonia Duloni, who we did a podcast episode about her. She was actually born in the Ukraine um, and she uh, was a fantastic artist and she and her husband Robert basically created a whole new form of art. Um, but check all those, do you check all those episodes out? We've covered just about everybody at this point. But here at this, you see this um, restaurant that's called the Relais Louis uh, the 13th. And this is because right here, this is a Grand Augustin was a convent that was here. And on May 14th, 1610, when his father, Henry IV, was killed by Rabbi Yak, uh, over there by Leal, um, as soon as he was killed and he died, they were like, we have to go get, we have to get Louis now because Louis then, was, of course, was the king. So Louis was staying here in the convent that was right here on this street. And this restaurant chooses to mark that it was actually here at this very spot that he was here. He took the Holy Communion and basically they said, guess what? Now you're the king, even though he was only eight years old. And we all know the story about his mother, Marie de Medici, who decided to hold on um, to that role as regent for three extra years. Um, he should have been king at the age of 13 plus a day. But uh, that didn't happen until he turned 16 and actually tossed her to a Chateau in the Loire, the Chateau de Bois, um, and locked her away and took over, finally took his power. But this is a really great street. I actually wrote about this street in Bonjour Paris a couple years ago because there's a bunch of other really cool things that are here. 
So here is this little niche that's here on the wall. This is, there's only two of these left in Paris. This one is actually in the best shape, but this actually goes back to when this was um, for oil lamps. So when they actually had oil lamps that lit the street and somebody actually had to, these men had to come up every day to get on the ladder and they'd go up on the ladder. That's why when you see some of the older signs or the street lamps that were have turned into now they're for electricity, but they have those funny little bars that stick out. That's because that's where they used to um, put their ladders and the ladders would rest on those little bars. And that's how they'd um, light the lamps. But this is what a uh, lamp and you could kind of see that little uh, piece of metal sticking out. So they would have had a lamp up there sticking out in the street. And they would come up here and they would drop down this piece and it would go into this little niche. And so into this little niche, there was a iron cage. They'd open up the iron cage, uh, drop down uh, the lamp in there and they'd light it and, you know, uh, and blow it out. So this is one of the only ones left in Paris. There's another one over um, on the right bank, but it is barely recognizable because it's just been chipped away up for so long. But below it is another super cool thing. That is, this is the definitely the best one in Paris. So there's these markers. And if you listen to the podcast episodes we did um, just before the poison one, we did two episodes about the floods of Paris and that. And this is one of the, this one is definitely in the best shape. There's a few of these you'll find around the city. And most of them have been painted over and then it just makes it really hard to see. But these were all installed here. And you see them when they're, it's within like a block or two of the set. Um, and this was actually to mark the different levels of the water. And so one of them was um, the level from the Pont de la Tournelle, which was for the sewers. So you see that here. So you see it's Pont de la Tournelle. That was for the sewers. Then you have one that's actually for La Villette. That is for the uh, water for the drinking water of Paris, which is the bottom one. And then the top one here, this is 34.99, is the distance from the sea. And you have the symbol of Paris there, the ship. Isn't that the coolest thing you've ever seen? And it's in such amazing shape. It's like, it's just, it's, it's like it's brand, brand new. It's so cool, I love this. And I love that you have all of that stuff. And that's why I wrote that article for Bollinger Paris, because there's so many cool things just literally right here with like within a block. So amazing. And then you have, of course, Mary Ashfer tea shop right here, which they have a really fantastic heat tea. But we're also going to head down here. This is the Rue Christine. And a lot of this has been kind of closed off. Um, I love this little corner. I love it anytime where you have the old street signs that were engraved there into the into the wall, how they originally were. And this wall here, it's actually kind of cool how they painted it. But Rue Christine is named after the daughter of Henry IV and Marie de Medici. So Henry's coming up a lot today. And look, there's this little restaurant. I was reading the menu this morning and it looks fantastic. How about we just pop in there? Let's all have to, you want to have dinner together or you guys will have breakfast? But I love the little fork up there. It looks really great here. I'll show you. They have a special lunch. You could do three course lunch. But look at roasted cauliflower with curry. Mm -mm. Duckling filet, crust, crusty rice. This is a different menu. So I think they change their menu every day. But look, isn't that pretty? Look at that table. Gorgeous. I'm going to come check this out. And right here, you have this little, this is the Christine. Um, movie theater and they they do really cool stuff like uh they do different themes and they are doing like an italian theme uh but i'm waiting i want to come see like a cary grant movie or something but they also have uh the shining but they do a bunch of uh they do a bunch of cool things there and so here Here's one of those stories. So, but the building is at, I didn't want to stop since everybody's there. 
um, the building that is there was the home of um, the doctor of Louis XIV, Denis Arnold, one of the doctors that had to do a hard, hard job, especially back then. If you watched that Versailles TV show, um, the doctor on it, her name was Claudine for a while, then she died. So here at number five, there's no plaque for this, this moment, which is probably good. But it was here at number five that Gertrude Stein moved in 1938. So she moved from that famous address that everybody knows of, and she moved over here. And it was here that she lived at the start of the war. And it was here that Miss Gertrude Stein, who was Jewish and a lesbian, but had a problem with anybody else that was a lesbian, who thought her money could protect her, and it did, um, she ended up actually finally leaving Paris um, because she was Jewish and a lesbian. So she'd definitely be at the top of Hitler's list. But she uh, left. And before she left, she was worried about her huge art collection that she is known for. And she ended up paying some German officials that she was friendly with to protect her apartment so that nothing would happen to it. Um, she thought her money kept her above everything, and in the end it did because she didn't lose anything. Um, she retained all of her stuff when she came back. And when she was gone, she and um, Alice B. Toklas, her partner, they went up towards the Alps, and that's where they stayed. Uh, but they stayed the first year, the first year of the war here in Paris, and then ended up leaving. Um, and while, while she was there, she was working on translating the speeches of Hitler and Lenin. And she um, got reached out to her publisher in New York and said, I am doing this. I want you to publish it. These speeches are amazing. And her publisher was basically like, lady, you're crazy. We're not doing that. And uh, the publisher actually stopped working with her after that. And so she had to find a new publisher. Um, and she also thought that Hitler deserved the Nobel Peace Prize. So I am happy to ruin another woman in history that everybody admires, but actually was actually kind of despicable. <laughs> so I just, I just, it, it amazes me how some of these stories of these women um, and these people, um, how people just decide to look away from the one, the whole story. They just want to look at, uh, you know, Gertrude Stein having her salons in Midnight in Paris and hanging out with and saying mean things about Picasso and Hemingway, but Hemingway gets told that he's the bully and he was mean to her. But she, uh, in the end, wasn't that great of a person. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just keeping it real for you. But this is, this ends up over here at the um, Rue Dauphine. And that is the adorable little Passage Dauphine. And we can actually, why don't I walk you down here? And we could end up over here. This is a really great hotel. Um, the Hotel de Bisson. I've had clients that stay there and I went in there one day to meet them for a tour and it's really beautiful in there. And it has like a little uh, bar that they do music and everything. It's really, really cute. I think it's a more, a little bit more on the expensive side, but it was a really lovely, little hotel that you should check out. Um, this restaurant closed for a while and they had a big update. I think this is a new restaurant here that has more of these exploding flowers that need to stop. And they have, I love this because it has the C-3PO and Chewbacca up there. The Rue Dauphine is an old, is, uh, was created when Pont Neuf was built because we lead right into Pont Neuf and the Place Dauphine. And this is named at, this actually got the name because of Place Dauphine, which is actually named for the Dauphin, Louis XIII. But because Place is feminine, it is the Place Dauphine instead of the Place Dauphin. I wondered that forever when I had asked. My French tutor years and years ago. And he said that was why. We'll just take you over here to the edge. How about we cross over here where there's less people? 
and more bytes. And next week, I said, I'll stay over in the Latin Quarter because that was kind of fun for three weeks in a row to do the right bank all around the Palais Royal. So maybe we'll kind of start in the same area and head the other direction because there's some really great stuff down just on the other side. And make sure you check out tomorrow's part two of the Poison Affair tomorrow's where we really get into how the Poison Affair came into the court of Versailles under Louis the 16th, 14th, sorry, Louis the 14th, Louis XIV. <gasps> what, I need that. <gasps> I've never needed anything more, except for that. I need that too. What is this great little place? Look at how cute these are. Oh, Matisse, there's a really amazing Matisse exhibit that just opened up at the Orangerie. Hey, there's that statue. I've seen that someplace. Oh, I've seen it up at the uh, Bibliotheque Nationale. This is a really cool little place. I'll tell you about this building. We'll do this another time because this building is super, super cool. But there we are. There's Paul Neuf and there's our guy, Henry, Henri Cat up there and the beautiful Samaritan straight ahead and the Cheval Blanc. And then you see, you can kind of see where the statue is outside of Louis Vuitton. But I will, let's see. Turn around and say hi for a second. Hi. Hi, y'all. I've got one of my grandma's lovely vintage pieces on that I am very glad to have this little uh, scarfy thing. It's been keeping me nice and warm this week. And thank you guys so much for joining me today. Joining me from Paris and sharing even more history, letting me nerd out about history. I appreciate it. If you want to send a tip or leave any little bit of appreciation, that would be wonderful. You could do it at PayPal or Venmo at Claudine at ClaudineHemingway.com. Also Zelle. Um, you could also go onto my Instagram and there's a little thing that says, buy me a glass of champagne. You could do that too. Um, or drop me my Patreon. But any way you want to support is fantastic or just even that you watch. And I appreciate that and tell everybody else um, I would love to get it so that we could get enough people on YouTube that I could do this on YouTube uh, because that's actually going to be an easier way to do it with my fancy new camera. And so share it with other people and I will have this on YouTube later today and hopefully later tonight. So, but thank you guys so much for joining me. I should see if there's any, uh, any, uh, anything in the chat I needed to answer. Thank you guys all for all of your lovely little chats in here. Oh, hi, Christy. Circus bakery clothes. Cinnamon buns, you don't need cinnamon buns in Paris. <laughs> it's still, you can still have cinnamon buns. I, a friend of mine that moved to Bordeaux, she um, made a, she went to a, um, a school event for her uh, boyfriend's daughter and she was asked to bring something because she's a really great cook and so she made a very american cake um and like a boxed uh, cake that i guess i think it's duncan hides or one of them is making this dolly parton with but dolly parton and it was a coconut cake with frosting and she when she made it i sent her a message i said oh you kind of i don't know how that's gonna go over because uh, they think american American sweets are way too sweet. Like our baked goods are way too sugary. And she was really upset because, um, and they were, it was like, you know, you bought little pieces of cake. It was, you know, a fundraiser. She was really upset because they only sold one piece. And then she wanted to bring the cake home with her because she wanted to eat it. Um, but they are very funny about that here. They don't like that, even though, but like if you had that one, um, so there were the Gaumont, uh, that's from Brittany, that thing is like a sugar bomb. It's like croissant dough and then it has caramelized sugar in it and it's delicious. 
but I can only eat about two bites of that. And then I start to get like a headache. It is so incredibly sweet, but it is kind of funny. They just think a lot of those American treats um, with all that frosting, you know, but they apparently probably have never had cream cheese frosting on a carrot cake because there is few things better than cream cheese frosting. <laughs> so good. Just give me the cream cheese frosting, hold the cake. But all right, guys, thank you guys so much. I'll look at the rest of your comments after I get back and download this. But thank you guys so much for joining and check out the podcast tomorrow. Um, Tuesday is a huge strike in Paris. They are saying that it's basically going to be the biggest one ever. There's everything supposed to come to a standstill. So that should be interesting. So I will uh, let you know how that goes. Um, they've been having meetings to try to uh, do, uh, you know, probably hopefully put it off and get everybody, you know, a little bit happier, but I think it's still going to happen. So it's going to be interesting. I made sure to plan on not going anywhere and telling all my clients that are here to not go anywhere that you need the metro or just or a car just what if you do anything go on foot and don't expect everything to be open because some places will close because people can't get to work so thank you guys so so much i'm gonna go home and get something nice and warm some soup um and maybe some you know warm red wine and i will see you guys all soon i'll talk to you soon thanks guys oh.